Okay, so this video is Global Resource Consumption and Security from IB Geography and the syllabus point is Divergent Thinking about Population and Resource Consumption Trends and these are the subtopics. So first of all, pessimistic views including Neo-Malthusian views, then optimistic views inclu including Bosserup, then thirdly we'll look at balanced views including resource stewardship. Okay, so first of all we'll start with the pessimistic Malthusian views. So overall, pessimistic pessimistic views show that population growth will lead to increased consumption depletion of resources environmental degradation so it basically looking from this graph um make also taking into account this is malthusian not neo-malthusian it shows that population growth will eventually outstrip food supply basically resulting in depletion of resources environmental degradation and um population growth leading to like basically famine okay and these are two concepts from Malthusian um the Malthusian perspective that are very important so Malthus positive checks these are occurrences outside of people's control such as disease death starvation and war and so the graph would look like this in that case um because the um food supply would kind of um fluctuate due to those um positive checks and then when you look at pre Matthew's negative checks preventative or negative checks are within people con within people's controls such as sexual abstinence delayed marriage reduced marriage among the poor because Malthus believed that poverty is a defect in people that pr should prevent marriage okay so in that case the food supply would go like it would increase and then it would kind of stagnate at this point okay so this video is global resource consumption and security for ib geography and the syllabus point is divergent thinking and about population and resource consumption trends so we're going to look at firstly pessimistic views including neo-malthusian views then optimistic views including bosserup and then finally we'll look at kind of an in between of these two so balanced views including resource stewardship so first let's look at pessimistic Malthusian views. So overall pessimistic views show that population growth will lead to increased consumption, depletion of resources and environmental degradation. So by the way make sure you notice that this is Malthusian not Neo-Malthusian that we'll discuss later on but okay so Malthusian views basically show that population growth is exponential whilst food supply is arithmetic so it's fixed and because of this population growth will exceed food supply at this point here um where kind of the carrying capacity will be exceeded and that will basically lead to famine um and depletion of resources and at this point where the carrying carrying capacity is um like about to be exceeded there are positive checks and negative checks so a positive check is occurrences outside of people's control such as disease death starvation and war that can, can that can um, influence population growth and then there are preventative or negative checks which are in people's control and that that they can decrease population growth um, such as sexual abstinence delayed marriage and reduced marriage along among the poor because Malthus believed poverty is a defect in people that should prevent marriage so this is the general Malthusian viewpoint and now we'll look at the kind of evaluation of this. So what is the evidence to support Malthus's theory? So there have been repeated wars and famines in the Sahel region of Africa suggesting population growth has outstripped food supply. The UN has stated that 690 million people in the world are suffering from malnutrition. There has been a population explosion. UN has also estimated um, 821 million people in the world suffering from hunger in 2018. Okay, so that's to support this idea of population growth outstripping food supply, but against this is the model is limited to food as the only resource. It does not take into account the fact that as countries amass wealth, they are no longer restricted to the carrying capacity of their immediate surroundings. They may import, they can, you know, find new technologies to increase food production and things like that. The model assumes that increasing living standards will mean decreased birth rates and this is most definitely not the case. It also 
um, has not necessarily occurred in high income countries because population growth rates have not been as rapid as predicted and they are not as they are not exponential. Also, advances in technology have changed the situation, as I just mentioned. Malthus also proposed that living standards are set by subsistence culture, which is no longer the only option for many people. Okay, now we're going to look at neo-Malthusian views. So these were re basically the Malthusian views were revived in the 1960s and 1970s by the neo-Malthusians. So the Club of Rome, a think tank of scientists, economists, business people, civil servants, and politicians from five continents, asked computer experts at Massachusetts, at MIT, to create computer model to predict what would happen if people continue to consume such a high amount of resources and this became known as the limits to growth model so computers were used to construct a series of world models to examine the future relationships between population food supply and non-renewable resources industry and population so here they're not just thinking about um, food supply and population but non-renewable resources industry and population i don't know why population is twice here but okay in the Malthusian view, agricultural production is presented as a sole resource, which is not true of the Neo-Malthusian viewpoint, in which five variables... Okay, so this is kind of a better description than this. Okay, I think this was meant to be pollution. Um, okay, whatever. But, okay, so five variables, pollution, food production, industrialization, pollution, and resource depletion are used as a way of creating a model of production. So in less than 100 years, society will run out of the non-renewable resources upon which industry depends. The depletion of resources will result in a sudden collapse in the economic system, resulting in massive employment, decreased food production, and a decline in population as the death rate soars. The characteristic behavior of the system is overshoot and collapse. By doubling estimates of the size of the resource base, the computer still projected collapse to occur, but this time caused by excessive pollution generated by increased industrialization. So it's... It is similar to the Malthusian view in that eventually there will be this idea of overshoot and collapse. However, it could be to different factors in this case. Thirdly, if depletable resource and pollution problems were both solved, population would grow unabated and the availability of food would become the binding constraint. So these are kind of the main conclusions of the limits to growth model. And here we have the limits to growth model showing all of the different factors that we just discussed and here is population growth and it's basically showing you um when um these when population is kind of outstripping these other resources and so resources are declining as population is growing as population is growing initial outputs growing um actually exceeding at one point food is increasing but then when they come together food production declines whilst population increases so it's kind of the idea of it population is outstripping the food production and then that leads to this huge um, collapse of population and then pollution also has this kind of positive relationship with population growth um, and then as it peaks population falls so that matches these kind of conclusions that we saw here Okay, now we're going to move on to optimistic views and boss her up. So what's the general viewpoint? Increased awareness of environmental impacts leads to a change in lifestyle to reduce consumption. Innovations will lead to increases in food supply. So the optimistic view generally holds that with new innovations and technological advance, each time population and resource consumption appears, though they are nearing a crossover where population would outstrip resources such as in the Malthusian view, society finds a way of mitigating the adverse effects of famine, environmental degradation, and overpopulation. Thus, they believe that with the correct distribution of methods, famine and degradation eh, as a result of an intersection can be avoided. And this was promoted by Bosserup, who challenged the Malthusian perspective by stating that the threat of starvation would be combated by agricultural techniques. So, basically, the size of the population here is determined by the amount of food supply. Population growth will stimulate the changes necessary to support increased numbers. And it's kind of run by this famous quote, Necessis ne <laughs> Necessity is the mother of invention. So, you know, when you need more resources, you're going to make the technology to do so. So, more recent agricultural innovations will increase yield. So, 
Examples here to support this is the Green Revolution, GM crops and biotechnology. However, let's look at the weaknesses. Not all countries have the same access to technologies to increase food supply. It does not take into account the distribution of food, it does not take into account immigration. It allows for environmental degradation, um, possibly because of the impacts that agricultural innovations may have on the environment and biodiversity. Eventually, you would get to the maxim maximum capacity of food production. It can be unsuitable in the long term as new agricultural developments may harm and degrade the land and it does not take into account the factors of migration. Oh, well, I already said that. Well, migration, immigration. Uh, okay, so here we have a grass, grass, a graph of Bosserup's theory. So here we see that food supply does not become outstripped by population. And actually in some graphs, it shows like a kind of graph that goes like this. So it's like every time the food supply comes near the population, new technologies are made to increase the food supply. So it goes like that. Okay. Finally, we're going to look at balanced views. So balanced views have been suggested as a strategy for sustainably managing natural resources. This involves using a conservation and preservation of natural resources with, whilst depending on human ingenuity or technological advances to find sustainable solutions to resource management. So what is resource stewardship? Stewardship is the ethical principle that views managing resources as a responsibility undertaken as a privilege on behalf of others. In other words, resources are managed, managed uh, with the needs of the wider and even global community in mind, taking into account resource availability for future generations, so being sustainable. Stewardship is thus quite different to exploiting resources for immediate profit as, vi as a avaricious avaricious oh my gosh this is from my notes um from like this source so i'm sorry that i couldn't say avaricious okay resource stewardship encourages a sustainable and responsible approach to managing resources that looks towards the needs of future generations rather than seeking immediate short-term outcomes by the way, it was avaricious, not avaricious.